Hi, I'm Keisha and I raised meat chickens for eggs. Why would you do that, Keisha? It's in the name. They're for meat. Well, my dear friend, I got in over my head with butchering. So basically, because I'm irresponsible. We got these chickens with the intention of butchering them for meat, and we did, except three. And they have started laying eggs. At the point that I got in over my head with butchering and didn't have time to get all my meat chickens butchered before they got to a too large point, at some point Meat Kings and Cornish Cross will become tough, usually about the 12 to 14 week um, mark. And at that point, or shortly after that point, I did realize that they were laying eggs. So I decided to keep them for their egg laying properties just to see what would happen. It was a really terrible experiment. On the plus side, and the only plus side, they laid three, roughly three, giant eggs per week. Like giant two yoked eggs per week. It was pretty cool, um, but other than that, everything else about having them that long was not pretty cool. Reason number one, they eat way too much for the amount of eggs that they produce. Sure, their eggs are large, but that doesn't compensate for the fact that they're not heavy producers overall, and they eat a ridiculous amount of food. The average high producing hen should be laying more like five to seven eggs a week and be eating a quarter pound of food per day and these birds could push their way to up to a pound of feed per day and then only give us three big eggs per week. Not really that great of a return on investment. A greater return on investment would be to buy yourself a good hybrid bird like a uh, Isa Brown, um, I think there's a few other hybrid birds um, that lay giant eggs, really heavy producers through the summer, like seven eggs per week throughout the summer. Those type of birds usually drop right off for the winter unless you have supplementary lighting in your coop, but they lay really big eggs really reliably with only that quarter pound of feed, whereas the meat kings will eat so much feed unless you regulate it, which you can do. So you could just regulate their feed, and that is an option. It's not what I did. Um, at that point, with only the two or three birds, I didn't feel like keeping them in a separate pin and having to let them out separately um, and feed them separately. It just it wasn't a viable option for me at the time. So um, if you did do that, I could see being able to keep them on a lesser amount of food. Being able to keep them on a quarter pound of food per day like a regular hen, I don't see that happening. I also think maybe if you lessened the amount of feed they were eating, they might not give you those three or so eggs per week. So you have to factor that, that in as well, which I did not experiment with because that brings me to my next point. The birds didn't stay alive that long because of the fact that they were overeating. So I, I, I suppose if one were to regulate their feed, they wouldn't be as heavy and stress from extreme weather wouldn't be as big of a deal. Um, two of them that died from natural causes, they were only about a year to a year and a half old. One of them died because it was way too hot out and the other one died because it was way too cold. They can't handle any extreme weather when they get to be big, but if you were regulating their food and they weren't getting to be such a large size so quickly, they would probably be a lot healthier and they might last a lot longer and get through a lot more extreme weather. And if you live in a more mild area where it doesn't get super hot and super cold, which it is here most of the year, then you might have better luck. So the main reason people seem to be asking me about how raising the meat kings for eggs went is because they want to know if they can breed two meat kings to make more meat kings. So the first reason that I don't think that would work so well is because the meat kings get so large that I don't know that they can properly um, mount each other to actually uh, fertilize an egg to then create another one. That's one reason, um, but if you kept them, if you were keeping them really healthy and you could keep them fit enough to reproduce at that age, then your next obstacle would be they are a hybrid chicken. So this is the simplest possible way and the simple understanding that I have of how hybrid chickens and hybrids in general work. 
So chicken A and chicken B are gonna be selectively bred. In this case, we're looking for size. So they'd be selectively bred until they get to the point of being big enough. So we have one, chicken A is gonna be one breed and chicken B is going to be another breed or a mixture of breeds if your hybrid is going that far. Now the male chicken and the female chicken are also each providing a separate set of genes. So that's why two males or two females can't reproduce. You need the set of genes from the male chicken and a set of genes from the female chicken to make a new chicken. So that being said, each chicken is then providing a unique set of genes. So if we then take breed A's selectively bred female and breed B's selectively bred male, we're going to get a hybrid chick, which is then going to be a mixture of the females provided genes and the males provided genes. So let's say the female provides the left half and the male provides the right half just for the sake of simplicity. So if we then switched the genders, let's say our male chicken was actually breed A and our female chicken was breed B, the chicks would then turn out different than our original set of chicks mixed between those two breeds. So that's why it's also important that it's a rooster from the certain breed and a hen from a certain breed to create the right type of chick based on the specific genes that it's getting from the hen versus the rooster. So in this case, you can see that when we've switched the genders, the chicks are turning out different. So that being said, if we then take chicks that were produced from hybrids, they're each going to have a mixture of the characteristics from each hen or from the hen and the rooster. So if we then combine those, we have so little control over what specific genes are going to be passed on to the chicks. This is something that's done in a controlled environment to try to hybridize chickens or plants further. However, for the average person, we have no control over which genes are then passed down and they would definitely not be true to the original hybrid. So in other words, babies produced from hybrid parents will not have the right set of genes from the male and the female parent to produce exact replicas of the parents. So do I think that raising meat kings for eggs is work it, worth it? Absolutely not. It's right in the name. They're for meat. It's worth it to raise them for meat. That's the whole purpose. If you're going to buy a very niche down hybrid bird that's for one specific purpose, don't try to make it do something it's not supposed to do. Because you're fighting with its natural, um, what it naturally wants to do. These birds naturally want to get really fat really fast. They're not meant to live long lifespans, which sucks for the bird, but that's just what they're bred for. If you're looking for a dual purpose bird, you should probably get a breed that's meant for dual purpose. And I know there's a lot of other birds. We have ones that are called, I think, a sasso, that are more of a high producing egg bird, but also give a decent amount of meat. So if you're looking into a dual purpose bird, then I would say go for a dual purpose bird. And if you're looking for it for the purpose of trying to recreate these hybrid chickens, then you're gonna run into the other obstacles, which I have explained. So overall, I'd say no, you can't really reproduce them. Although it might be possible for them to have chicks, they probably won't come out anything like the parents. You could also, try to hybridize your own birds, but that will take years and years and years and generations and generations. If you wanted to do that, then sure, it's possible, but it's not what I'm up to. What I really think is that the meat chicken is made to be a meat chicken. And in whenever you're keeping any um, animals, regardless of what animal it is, every time you're trying to fight its natural instinct you're gonna run into obstacles so let the chicken the meat chickens be meat chickens and let the egg laying chickens be egg laying chickens and if you want more of a heritage breed chicken then go for that if you want more of a dual purpose chicken then go for that just go for the right kind of kind of chicken for your purpose and don't try to make a chicken that isn't meant for that conform to your needs 
because you're gonna run into obstacles. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> we are getting our meat chickens or our little baby meat chicks within the next couple of weeks here in mid-April. We'll be going to pick those up and I am planning on doing a video on going to actually pick up your chickens from the farm store and what that's like getting them home and um, getting them settled in and that whole experience. So if you are interested in that, then stick around and I will see you then.